Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where as a space engineer, we're not afraid to get our hands dirty. Today we're going to work on a tunnel digger. It's a pretty simple rover with six drill heads on the front, a lot of medium cargo containers, and several wheels. Now if you ever wanted to drill through a mountain in a straight line, without having to constantly connect, disconnect, connect, disconnect, pistons and drills and conveyors. There's a kind of an easier way. We can skip all that by building one of these tunnel rovers. As always, I start out by placing my conveyor blocks and then I mount everything else on top of that, ensuring that we can have full distribution of any ore that we mine I'm using a fighter cockpit just because the back of it makes it easier to connect a survival kit and the medium cargo containers. Now the survival kit, when you're building small, doesn't have the large port on both ends. So we have to use these small conveyors on the other end and then be able to connect this medium cargo container through the small ports on the top and bottom. To do this, I simply rotated them 90 degrees before installing. Then finally, I'll add a connector to it. With the small conveyor blocks running all the way through, luckily, the medium cargo container the fighter cockpit, the survival kit, and the connector all connect together and the ore should go right through it whenever we're mining. Just gonna reinforce it here with some lightweight blocks. This is the base that I use to mount all the wheels on. Since we're using size three wheels, I'm spacing these two blocks apart from each other. This gives you just enough space where the wheels aren't necessarily touching, but it doesn't leave any space either. To drive this thing, we're actually gonna use rotors instead of using the typical gear that you would use to operate a rover. In a sense, this thing's gonna drive more like a tank. So on the controls here, I'm gonna mark all these rotors on the left side with an L so I remember which ones are which. It comes in handy when you group them later and when you assign those groups to an action. There, the left side's done. Just gotta work on the right side. Now you can vary how many rotors you use. I prefer to go the entire length of the chassis just so I know I have enough power since these small rotors don't necessarily have that much torque and you are going to be pushing this forward into solid stone. Luckily these wheels will just pop right on. There's nothing extra you really need to do. Just line it up and apply. What I like about using these rotors also is you can have a consistent speed when operating. So you're not having to constantly hit a key or anything. You can set them to one rotational or velocity rate and they'll continue to spin unless obstructed by something. I'll have to do that last one after we drop this thing down. All right, now for the front end of this beast. 
Now you want this to stick out somewhat away from the rest of the chassis because otherwise when you race drills up and down, they might hit your gear. We really don't want that. And then I'm going to stick this farther out because we're going to add two pistons so we can increase or decrease the height of those lower drills. This way, when we use the drills, we can actually adjust the level so we know that this darn thing will continue to go on a flat surface and not start digging directly into the ground. Because once you start digging into the ground or digging downward, your rover has a tendency of following that. And that usually comes out bad. I lost a rover earlier of the same make because I didn't realize I needed to adjust the height. I didn't add any pistons or anything. And I'm pretty sure it's probably a quarter of the way to the center of the Earth-like planet right now. There are six drills attached. And now that I put the pistons, we can kind of build up this wall because we know it's not going to get caught up on anything and it'll be free of every other obstacle. Now this front end, you don't necessarily need to do anything fancy. I just filled it in for looks. Let's see. I remember when I did the one next to this, I had set it at about 0.5 to 0.6 meters. And with that, it kept it level and prevented it from digging into the ground, but also prevented us from not digging down far enough where we continue to elevate our climb. We want this thing to go in a straight line, not climb up a mountain or go into the bottom of it. Then we're just powering this with simple batteries. You can also throw on some small nuclear reactors if you have some. Or you have just enough space on top where I think you could throw in a hydrogen tank, a hydrogen engine, and maybe an O2 generator. Might be pushing for space, but if you see how tall those upper pistons are, you can usually get away with about a meter worth of space or a meter and a half worth of space above the drill itself. There we go, that's all filled in. I think that's about it. Just need to make the front end look a little bit more aesthetic. The best place, honestly, to build a base is probably inside of a mountain. That's where this little device comes in handy. With a conveyor system connected to a large refiner or anything like that, you could also dig a tunnel, but you'd have to keep it in a straight line. And honestly, straight lines get boring after a while. With this thing, you can slightly adjust left or right as you're digging, and you could make a curved tunnel instead. Plus, like I mentioned earlier, you don't have to continuously rebuild the drills, the conveyor, and pistons. The other good thing I found out about this, when digging a tunnel, as soon as you're actually inside of, say, a mountain or mountainside, for the most part, the rotors spinning at the same constant speed will keep you in a straight line. Because you have consistent pressure on every part of the drill, it'll continuously focus you in that line. Unless say you come across a pocket where there is no stone for a minute, then you might alter it just slightly, but otherwise you can leave this thing unattended and just let it run. Here I'm just adding pistons so we can gradually lower ourselves to the ground. I've made this mistake before where I didn't gradually lower and I broke a couple of wheels off. It's always a good idea to gradually lower, especially if you're on a planet because of the gravity.
Move these out of the way. Nope. These small blocks always get me. I miss it the first couple of times. I find if you crouch, though, it's easier to focus on them. And there's the last wheel. Looks like we got everything on here. Lowered back down. Just going to pop these pistons right back off again. And there you have it. I decided not to put dual wheels on here just because we want to test this thing out before we can actually determine how wide these drills are going to cut through the earth. If we had too wide of wheels, we wouldn't be able to stay in the same track. It would keep bumping us out. Next is to assign these rotors. The first one is your rotor lock unlock. Then I'm going to add the reverse. Rotor lock unlock and reverse. You can do these in any way you want, but if you don't have these options, it's going to be harder to control. And then toggle drills on and off. And finally, in the number six and number seven slot, I'm setting them to toggle them on and off. Otherwise, when you reverse, it's just going to straight reverse the direction of the wheels, but it won't actually stop them. Then, for my velocity, you can set it faster if you want. If you set it to about 60 RPM, which is the max, then you're going to go about 5 meters per second. I find when you're digging, you should probably set it around 1 on your velocity. That way, when you're operating, it will actually run at about 0.3, which is a good pace to not clog up your drills and have a consistent cutting. These are kind of interesting though, because you can drive them like a tank. You can reverse one side while the other side is still going forward. And it allows you to pretty much turn on a dime. Zero degree radius if you want. However, getting to the actual dig site does take a while. And since I put it about a kilometer away from this build location, I'm just going to fast forward past that viewing to save you the time. And here's our build starting point. This surface is pretty level, I'd say. But as we drive up here, you can tell there's a slight incline going up to the base of the mountain. So if you have this issue and you want to keep a level tunnel the entire time, I'd recommend that we build a platform where we can start out on a flat surface. Once you start it out on the flat surface and your drills are kept at that digging surface level, then it's going to keep a level cut all the way through the mountain. Otherwise, if you start on this kind of surface where you can see it's a little bit sloped, it's going to cut in it at a slope. In fact, if we were to drive up to the mountain right now, we wouldn't actually be cutting into anything. As you can see, the drills are creating a lot of dust, but they're not cutting into the ground. And if we continued on the same slope, we wouldn't get anything until we actually hit the side of the mountain. Here I have it started at 0 0.3 for your velocity. It seems very slow, but that's about the speed you want when you're cutting through. Okay, let's build this platform. There we are. You can see now that we have a flat platform, how much it was actually going to raise on an incline if we were to drive without the platform. We definitely would not have had a level tunnel by any means. 
one thing to note when you're setting your drive the left rotor's direction is going to be the opposite of the right rotor's direction just to move forward. So if you, say, set your velocity to 10 on the left side, you need to set it to negative 10 on the right side. Come on, sloth, we can do this. Well, as always, thanks for watching, and I hope you leave your tips, tricks, and suggestions in the comment section. I appreciate it. This might take a while.